Hey everybody, welcome back. So now that I have my Ander 3 in an enclosure where I can print some of the more exotic filaments, not that ABS is exactly exotic, but um, things like polycarbonate and some of the tougher nylons. Now that I have that done, there's a project I've been meaning to do for a while, and that is a power supply. Some of you chided me over my power supply that I've been using as a bench power supply where I just took a computer power supply and I chopped everything off other than the ground the 5 volt and the 12 volt lines so because of that and because I've been meaning to I thought I would actually create a real power supply out of this now I could go out and I could buy one of the Chinese $50 power supplies and call it good but you know where's the fun in that where's the learning in that to me that's just boring so this is the inside of this old Antec 350 watt power supply that I was using as you'll see the red is 5 volts and I got a, I just chopped them off and left them bare and yes that's embarrassing but I was in a hurry one day and I did it the blacks are ground of course and they're grounded to the body of the case the yellow are the 12 volts and over here in the orange or pink whatever you prefer is the 3.3 volt line I don't really know why I need 3.3 volts but I may bring it out anyway and this one here I have jumped this is the I forget what you call it the sense line when you um, press the button on your computer this is the, the one that tells the power supply to turn on and provide all these others I just have it jump so that when you flip the switch back here it turns on now I have a couple of little boost converters because since I'm working on an Ender 3 I want 24 volts so this little boost converter here these are like if you buy five of them at a time they're like 95 cents each this one's a little bit more expensive this one can handle more amperage it um, has a little a little heat sink on it and it has buttons that can show you the input and the output it's considerably bigger but it's also more capable and easier to use they both have your standard little pot here to adjust the output power so and I've got I've got boxes I haven't printed a box for the smaller one yet but in my ABS test I printed boxes that two different ones that mount this one that mounts a fan on the front and this is the one that you can mount a fan on the front and the little box just kind of snaps together and this one here and all that all that crap in the bottom is what comes with the larger of the two boost converters this one doesn't have a fan but it has a window and a hole where you can adjust it on the fly without taking the cover off I have no idea how much how much cooling this is going to need to convert 12 to 24 but you know what that's one of the things I'm going to find out and I'm going to do a test on both of these so right now and you know what YouTube is filled with videos of people making me turning these computer power supplies into bench power supplies I've watched four five six of them and none of them are really doing exactly what I want to do hopefully Thingiverse will have more things for and I've got somewhere around here I've got a um, package of little multicolored banana plug mounts you know so you can connect a wire or a banana plug to the front I'm going to use those don't know where they are at the moment but um, I'll find them here and so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the board out of this enclosure and I'm going to clean up all those cut off wires and I'm going to bring myself some wires out of it nice um, I've got some flexible filament so I might print myself a nice a nice grommet for that and um, we're going to get that back in then we're going to test the two different boost converters and um, we'll design something if we need to to get it all mounted and turn it into a really nice looking nice looking bench power supply so stick with me in this project okay, and I'm back I got my um, most of the wires that I had chopped off I unsoldered from the board some of them I had I had chopped off so close to the board and the fact that they have gang soldered the back of them made it extremely difficult to get off so some of them I just had to leave on there and then I just potted them all up with hot glue with the ones I got off and the ones I didn't get off I brought out um, also brought out one of the 3.3 volt wires which is the um, the pink one kind of orange pink I don't not really either one to be 
honest. Now, had I been starting from a power supply I hadn't already buggered up, I probably would have brought out multiple grounds and at least two of the 12 volt lines. But I didn't. I've already buggered this one up, so this is going to be version one. Let's first, before we go any further, let's test to make sure that we actually have the voltage on it that we're looking for. Okay, so somebody also asked me if I'd do some of these tests using one of the Freebie Harbor Freight multimeters, so here we go. I didn't get my 87th cheapo free flashlight, so I actually got the free multimeter. Every time I've gotten these in the past, I have just given them away to people, but might hang on to this one. So let's get the um, negative wire out of the way. Let some turn the power supply on. Fan starts up, so let's do some testing. Here is, you can see that, right? Yeah, you can see that. Here is negative, and where'd my positive lead go? There it is. So let's start with the 3.3 volt line. We say 3.35, that's pretty good for a Harbor Freight multimeter. Let's try 5, that's the red one. 5. 5.13, okay, that's good enough. And last but not least, the 12 volt line. Come on. And, whoops, 11.99, I'm pretty happy, whoops, slipped off. Yeah, 11.99, I'm good with that. So our power supply is still working. Let's get this fine meter out of the way, get my pump out of the way. Now I got on Thingiverse and I started looking for ways to mount. And I got some of um, these little things. These are going to go on the front. These are going to be what I plug into. These just have a screw on thing. And then you can put a single wire in there and tighten it or you can stuff a banana plug in the end. And I'm only going to use four. I got five different colors for some reason. I got a bag of them with five different colors of probably 20 or 30 total in it. And um, where'd my little board go here? I had it in my hand just a second ago, but now I have hidden it from myself. There it is. So I'm trying to find some way to get these wires and these things in my little my little um, boost converter because I want 24 volts and um, oh you know what we could do we could test this while we're at it and make sure we're getting 24 volts there's 24 I'm gonna have to kinda let that hover for a minute let me get my meter back cheapo harbor freight meter we're still on 20 volts so I'm gonna have to switch it to the 200 scale and let's make sure we're getting 24 volts. As I said, I've already been fooling with this, so I already know it works. 24. And let me get the meter over so you can see it. Come on, meter. What are you doing? And our meter says... I'm having trouble keeping it on there. 24.3. So that's pretty good. So, let me switch the meter off. Get it to one side. Let me turn power supply back off unplug it let's get this out of the way temporarily so one of the things I was looking for I'm looking for a way to get all that mounted here on the power supply and some of the ones you'll find some of these conversion videos and things you'll find let me zoom back out a bit here wrong way some of these conversion videos and websites you'll find showing you how to do this they put everything inside and drill through the cover that might be fine on some newer power supplies, but this old Antec, it's filled to the brim with components. So, I couldn't find anything I liked on Thingiverse. This does not appear to be that universally used. I could only find those little two boxes you already saw in my um, ABS test video I was using. So, I jumped into Thingiverse, I jumped into Fusion, and I made my own. And this is a version number one. This is designed to sit down here like this and give me a place to mount all this. <coughs> and the sharp among you have probably already noticed I goofed up and left a hole out. This is going to mount the, this is going to mount this little boost board right here, and I'm going to put some standoffs on it so I can possibly make a cover on it. I don't know that I really think that's going to be necessary or not. Then I have marks here for whoops. I have marks here for 3.3, 5, and 12. 
I have a hole for the wires to come out the back and to go into the input on this. And then I was supposed to have another hole over here for the wires to come out and go back to the back and then go where this terminal, like that, I'll have a terminal mounted there and I marked it VAR for variable, except I forgot that hole. Or actually, that is that hole. Variable should have been up over here someplace. But nothing's ever perfect, right? So I'm either going to bring the wire for the variable directly from the output to here, or I'm just going to poke a new hole someplace in it with a, um, a drill bit or a um, hot chunk of metal. So anyway, let me get this all put together and I'll be back and we'll see how well it works. Okay, it's been a few days since my last piece of this video, mainly because I kept messing this part that I printed up. Um, first I kept leaving holes out, left the grounds out, left one of these holes out, then I made these two close together, and then when I got all that right, for some reason I started breaking them, breaking them right across here over backwards. It's held on with double stick tape, by the way. I've got this sure tape, double stick tape. Stuff is crazy sticky, that's what's holding it down. So I finally made a strut across the back, and that's why it's um that's why I haven't been able to break this one yet. So let's um let's take a look at it. Let me pull the power plug out of it so I can flip it over a little easier. So I've got 3.3, 5, 12, and ground, and over here VAR for variable and another ground. I put another ground over on this side because I thought that would be easier when using 24 volts or whatever the, you have the output of the LTC1871. I decided to go with this one rather than the small one because the small one has quite a bit of a, um, a, a limit on current. This is, I think, I remember right, this is 100 watts. And I think that little one is like 20 or 25. And I like the idea of the display. That keeps me from having to put some other meter on it as I adjust it. So um, let's take a look at the back real quick. Um, you can see I, um, I got it all soldered together in the back on the little banana clip ends. On a good day, my soldering on a scale of 1 to 10 is about a 7. On a bad day, it's about a 5. This was a bad day I did it, and it's aluminum wiring, so I'm probably at about a 4. I didn't put a switch on the front because this power supply has a switch on the back. And um, I didn't put any LEDs on it because this has a numerical display, has a red LED and a green LED. And let me tell you something, that green LED is right next to the little screw where you adjust the output voltage and the bloody thing is blinding. So um, it may very well get blacked out <laughs> because it's hard to get a screwdriver on that little tiny screw. Wish I could find a way to get something slightly bigger on there. Not sure I dare solder something on that, but um, I might just black the LED out. So anyway, I think that's about it. I potted, I cleaned up the board inside, and I potted all the, the wires I couldn't get out that I clipped off too close. And I put the, told you I put this screw in from Thingiverse, this nut and bolt combination with the hole in the center. I had to scale it down to fit a three-quarter inch slot. It was set for a one-inch slot. And um, yeah, let's plug it back in and let's see what works. I got the Harbor Freight meter and the old one out. And um, we're going to give this a shot. I'm going to use my roll of tape here and I'm going to prop this up. Maybe you can see it a little better. Here we go. Let's, um, let's flip it on and see what happens. Poof! No! I'll be darned. Look at that. Yeah, that little green LED is blinding. And if it looks like it's flickering on the screen, it's, um, it's really not flickering in real life. It's rock solid. These little buttons down here, this one, if I didn't mention it before, this one turns off the display and back on. And this one switches between our output voltage and our input voltage. So let's get the meters turned on and let's see if I got what I was trying for. The Harbor Freight meter, I'm going to set at the 20 volt scale and flip it on. The O1, I'm just going to set to volts DC and it will auto range for me. See if I can do both of these at once. I'm pretty fumble fingered, but I'm not having a completely bad day because I haven't knocked everything off the bench yet. But you know what? It's still pretty early. I could still do that. Let's start with ground and 3.3 volts. The O1 says 3.35. Let's see if I can get the, um, so excuse me, yeah, the, whoops, knocked one of my watches over. Okay, maybe they are going to wind on the, up all on the floor. 
<laughs> Let's see if I can get the um, O on it at the same time. So, get my big fat arm out of the way. And, okay, maybe it is going to be one of those days. Maybe I can't do both at once. Let's try one more time before I give up on that plan. There we go. The Harbor Freight says 3.35, 3.36, and the Oon says 3.3, 3.354. Let's switch from 3 volt, 3.3 to 5. The Harbor Freight says 5.12, and the Oon says 5.118. Let's go down to, or excuse me, up to 12, down on the box, up in voltage. The Harbor Freight says 11.91, and the Yohan says 11.90. So, that's pretty good. Let's, um, let's try the variable side. I've got it on 24 volts. That means I need to switch the Harbor Freight meter to the 200 volt scale. And um, we'll switch the grounds. And see if I can do this without completely covering it with my arm. There we go. Well, that's in the way now. The um, Harbor Freight says 24.2 and the Owan says 24.23. So that's pretty darn good. One thing I've been kind of curious about, though, is this. I thought I remember seeing this said it maxes at 30 volts and somebody else told me no they go higher than that so let's find out let's hope we don't wreck it so first I gotta try and get first I need to cover that stupid green el green bloody LED up because I can't see diddly squat looking straight into that how about that for now so let's crank this thing up and let's see how high it goes and then let's test it so 25 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and still going. 33, 34, that looks like it tops out at 34.9, or flipping back and forth between 34.9 and um, and 35 that green LED. Let's um let's get the meters on that and let's see what that what the meters show for that. Oops. The um O on is calling that 35.64 and the harbor freight is gonna call it 35.6 and again I had to go up a scale one scale setting on the um, on the Harbor Freight so I get one more point of is that accuracy or precision I forget which on the on the O1 but that's within a tenth of a volt that makes me pretty happy actually it's within it's less than that of course you don't really know where the next next digit on the on the Harbor Freight is but anyway that's pretty darn good this looks like it's going to be a, a nice little unit for me for a while. Anyway, I think that's it. I think this thing is going to be pretty usable for me if it turns out. And it's not something I'm going to use a lot. But it is nice to be able to have easy to access different voltages when you're testing things out. So I think this will come in handy for me in the future. And um, hey, I hope, you, um, hope this video is of some value to you. If not, you know what? At least I hope it was um, humorous. So, catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.